What's up guys, Nick Daniel here with Axis Flight School, and in today's video I intend to share some conditioning exercises that I do that target and improve my grip strength. This is a slightly unusual video for our channel as this type of content isn't something we have produced before. Right now we're on a break because of COVID-19. So we're not skydiving, we're not flying in tunnels. And I figured I would go ahead and share some of these exercises that I'm currently doing in order to stay in jumping shape. Don't worry, I'm not gonna use this video as an excuse to run around without my shirt off. Um, these exercises are not targeted towards aesthetics, but actually more just for functional strength, especially as they pertain to skydiving. Keep in mind that there's risk associated with doing any type of physical activity, especially when it comes to working out. So please be conservative within your approach and how you adapt these drills into your routines. Let's go ahead and strengthen those talons. Using a tennis ball is a great way to start working on your grip strength. Simply work on squeezing and crushing the tennis ball as hard as you can and do not forget to include your thumb. Hand grippers can be used almost anywhere and come in many different resistance levels. Personally, I use the Iron Mines Captains of Crush Level 2. I left a link to this product in the description below if you're interested. Line stoves make a great training tool. Simply grab yourself a line stove from your packing kit and tie it around your fingers. Work on extension by spreading your fingers as wide as possible. I incorporate juggling as a way to break up my workout routines. It's a great way to develop hand-eye coordination and agility, and it also serves to break up the monotony of some workouts. Keeps it interesting. A wrist roller is a fantastic tool for developing twisting power. You can easily build one yourself by attaching some paracord to a rod. Then, girth hitch the other end of the rope to whatever weight you want to use. If you're new to this exercise, I recommend using a gallon jug which weighs around 8 pounds. If you find that this is too heavy, you can shed some of the weight by pouring out some of the water. Hold your arms out parallel to the ground in front of you. Then start twisting the rod to wrap the rope around it. Once the weight is at the top, twist the rod in the opposite direction to lower the weight. For greater resistance, you can use plates, a dumbbell, or even a kettlebell. However, with the higher weights, I do not extend my arms out in front in order to protect my shoulders. Levering is a great method to get in some wrist work. This can be done with a variety of objects, such as an axe, a broom, a shovel, you name it. The goal here is to keep your arms still while only using your wrist to lower and raise the object at 90 degree angles. Start by grabbing the object near its geometric center. If you want more resistance, work your hand towards the end. If the weight becomes too great, simply drop the object in lieu of risking injury. You can also use a lightweight object such as a PVC pipe or broom handle, but you may have to move the object a little bit quicker in order to get adequate resistance. Sand twisting allows you to work on gripping very similar to the tennis ball from earlier, but with the added benefit of toughening the hands. You can get sand from your local hardware store or maybe find some at a local park. Another hardware store item you can add to your list are a couple of bricks. In addition to toughening your hands by flipping and catching them, you will also further develop your pinching strength and hand-eye coordination. Try a variety of sizes, shapes, and weights. Push-ups can be performed in a variety of ways to match your current skill level. If any of the following exercises are new to you, I would recommend taking at least one step back from your current ability level. In addition, perform the following on a soft surface like a yoga mat or towel for additional comfort and traction. Knuckle push-ups are designed to target elbow and wrist stabilization. If you're unable to perform a full push-up, you can do this on your knees or an incline or just try to hold the top of the push-up, which is also called a knuckle plank. Once the elbows and wrists have been strengthened to support your weight, you can start on the long journey of working towards finger push-ups. I recommend doing them against the wall first in order to build up the strength and coordination. You can then gradually work your way towards the floor. Rather than starting on the fingers right away, you may want to use the intermittent step of doing push-ups to your fingers. This exposes your fingers to more stress but for a limited amount of time. Training your fingers like this exposes them to a significantly greater risk of injury. Personally, I do them very sparingly and I listen to my body, careful not to ignore signs of pain or discomfort. In addition to working the forearms, hands, and wrist flexors, these next set of exercises also strengthen the upper back, shoulders, and core. The dead hang is a fundamental step to learning pull-ups. Grip the bar with an overhand grip or palms facing away from you about shoulder width apart. Keep your arms straight 
and your upper back engaged by keeping your shoulders away from your ears. If you find any of the following exercises relatively easy, you can increase the difficulty by wearing your rig or increasing the amount of reps and sets. As your strength develops over time, try performing the dead hang with one arm. This is a more advanced move and should be worked towards gradually. Remember to work both arms equally. If this is a new exercise for you, start by aiming for 10 seconds. In order to include my core, I also like to pull up my knees. If the one-handed dead hang starts to get easier and you're looking for the next step, try incorporating a towel. Rather than hanging from the bar with your fingers, the towel forces you to include your thumb. You can use the non-towel hand for support and include pull-ups if you're looking for an added challenge. Aim to do three sets of 15 reps, but when you first start, you can simply go for exhaustion. Ultimately, you can work your way up to using both hands simultaneously. I recommend starting out with just hanging for time. The more material you have in your hands, the more difficult gripping becomes. As you can see, I doubled the amount of fabric in my hands by folding the towel a couple of times. Rope pull-ups are second to last on my list as they allow you to build incredible upper body strength. This exercise is great for building up the foundation to climb an actual rope without the added danger of falling from a great height. If you do have access to a climbing rope, just remember that even though your goal is to climb and descend using only your arms, you can use your legs for support if you're getting close to failure. Climbing a rope is definitely my favorite workout on this list as it incorporates elements from everything we have covered in this video. So there you have it. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to share it with your friends. If you find that you enjoyed this type of content, please let us know by commenting below, and we may consider doing more videos like this in the future. During this time, we wish absolutely everyone the best and hope everyone is doing well, and we're very much looking forward to getting back in the air. Thank you again so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Totally lost my train of thought. Hang on, just keep it rolling. <laughs> I haven't skydived in so long now I don't remember what the terms are. <laughs>